Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. This time we're not going to do anything shiny related, something quite different. I want to introduce a bit the Ebiorix web framework that I've been working on for the past year or so. I've poured quite a bit of energy in it in, in the last few months and I feel like it's getting somewhere. Um, I've received a few, well, quite a few questions on, on how it works, why, etc. Uh, I'm not sure I addressed it directly, but I just want to give a, a, a brief look at how exactly it works. I have a feeling um, the medium of the video uh, may be well suited for this. It's kind of, it's not really seeing is believing, but seeing is understanding uh, more than anything. I've recorded this video about five times now. I may not look like it, but uh, believe me. Um, and every time I go into the weeds and trying to explain exactly what happens under the hood, but I think like most things, you just have to write some code, run it, and eventually you'll get it. So we'll jump right into it. Let me show my screen right here. So this is the website. Please visit mbworks.dev if you have any questions. There's ample documentation, though I wouldn't be surprised I'm missing some things. Uh, so as it says here, it's a web framework or are inspired by Express.js. Express.js is a very uh, prominent, um, well, web framework for Node.js. Um, it, it tried and tested the, and so I've taken inspiration from it for the syntax and how you build the application, how you, which is, I don't know, crucial for developers like us it's, it's it's essentially how you think about the problem how you solve problems um the logic of your application it's it couldn't be more different from shiny so yeah the script let me make that much bigger yes maybe too big who knows um the way it works is we create an application it's an uh, we're going to get an app object from the mbr which we instanti instantiate a new class like so mbrx is not like shiny shiny is for single page applications this is for multi-page applications uh though you could build single page applications with mbrx i don't see why you would you'd be much better off with uh shiny for this um so the way it works is we, since we have multiple pages, we need to, well, set up, if you like, the pages we're gonna handle. Um, so generally what you want is get. Get is essentially a get request. If you've used um, HTTR and you do get request, that's essentially what you do. So if I get and you already start, I think I need, I should get, all the HTML that I have here. And essentially that's what your browser does when you visit the website. It does a get request, but then is able to render the, the HTML, um, run the JavaScript, etc. Um, what we're gonna do here is then a get on the first slash, which is the, the home page. Uh, every single one of those handlers, as they're called, uh, take takes a function that should accept two arguments. Uh, the request uh, uh, shortened to rec here and the response as res here. Rec is a request that's what's coming from the server, from the client to your server. Res is response is what, is what we sent back. So what we're just gonna be concerned with here is res for response and we're gonna send back hello, come up, hello explanation mark that's all we're going to do for now then to start the app we just have app start. now if i run this just like shiny it finds a, a random port a random available port puts it on it and that's what we see and if i infect this again this may be too small still too small by the looks of it we see the html not too shabby but it doesn't do too much um, an interesting thing with MVRX and such a framework is that then you have a single syntax for most of the stuff you want to do. So if you want to build an API, we're going to open an endpoint on forward slash data. It's going to take a request and a response. Um, 
and the response we're gonna send some JSON and we're just gonna send the car state the same. Now if I go here it opens on the home page the first slash but if I go to slash data the car state set serialized that's rendered by uh, again a little bit bigger by um Firefox but if I go to raw data we can see this it's serialized a certain way the serialized can be customized again plenty of information on the website for this um one thing that's extreme well that I find actually extremely cool with this is uh, parameters and query the idea generally when you use an API endpoint you 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 likely pass it arguments or yeah, some some kind of you, you pass it some kind of data that's use server side to uh, return the data. So for instance, here we return the entire cars data set. Let's say we want to just return one column of it. So we're gonna first look at uh, how to do it with a query. Uh, I think it's not very restful to do that, but we'll do it like so. Uh, you do the interrogation mark, which is what will be used if you. It's parameters you're gonna do all equals read equals equals list to get it here we just denote it like so and that will be under the hood parsed um, by mvorex uh, again this is something that's coming from the client it's part of the request so it's gonna be on the request we're gonna have query it's gonna be a list Going to be a named list that's going to include plenty of uh, all the information we want so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to print uh, the entire query but what we're ultimately interested in is the column object not sure what happened here so if i run this now we still see this it's a bit zoomed in this time but still the same thing if i go call equals uh, what did we say this i get the distance and you see printed here in the console, uh, it's a named list. And that's why here we get a column object. And if I now pass speed, that's what I'll take. Um, that's how you would go about it with uh, the query. You can also do so with um, parameters. They're denoted like so with a colon. So we're going to go one slash beyond in the path we're going to go a bit deeper i'm going to go print params which is what we're working at this time params um, launch the application again now interestingly if i go to slash data if we look at the code we're not listening to actually slash data only to slash data then one of our parameters and if i go to slash data i should therefore get a 404 not found Again, that's customizable, but if we do slash speed, we get what we want, slash this, we get what we want. So that's pretty neat, or I think at least. Um, note that I don't do any error handling here, which I should do. So just real quick, maybe we can do... Um, if... Like, we're going to check that... The column is in the column state the same. And then if it's not, I'm going to return uh, JSON is be consistent. Um, it's, it says error equals wrong column. So now if I go to slash data slash speed, that should still work. But if I go to um, whatever, you get this error, at least I get it in, in Firefox. It can't parse the JSON, but the raw data you can see is well there. No issues here. Um, cool. So that covers that, I think. Uh, let me get rid of this. Well, now another thing that's very interesting uh, if you return a lot of HTML currently we just do hello world I could put tons of HTML here of course but that's probably not what you want to do uh, what you want to do <clears throat> is have some kind of template or maybe it's not a template maybe it's just a static file that you return every time as is let me have a swig of coffee so here we're going to place HTML 
Uh, we're just going to do body for now. Beast. And here we can have H1. Like so. Now I have this file here. What I can do in this function is instead of using uh, send, I'm going to use render and I'm going to pass it a file. Well, in fact, if it's a file, you can just use, use send. I'll look at that very shortly. And that's what I get. It's an, this time I put it in an H1 tag. That's what we get here. And close this. Uh, but what I want to do ultimately here maybe is render. And what render does is it's going to, well, in a sense, render what you have. Uh, render with an N, not an N. Render the home page. So what we could do is I'm going to generate a random number from the server and render it in here. So I can do random number. And we use this special tag under the hood. It's using glue for this. And I'm going to use it, uh, I'm going to name it number. So it's going to render this and this should be replaced with a random number. The way this is going to work is we're going to pass here a name to list again. And the number is going to be, well, I have a number between 1 and 100. And if I run this now, I got 14, I refresh 11, and so on. So that's pretty cool to render stuff dynamically if you want. Um, we can also look at how, since it's for multi pages, we're going to add, let's add an about page to our application and here i'm gonna do the response and i'm gonna send file about the html for the about i'm gonna lazily copy what i have here about what html and we're just gonna put us. So this is my about page. This is my home page. What I can do on the home page then is maybe we're going to add a little a link to this about page. It's going to make it easier. So clicking this link is going to send me to about. I click about, I get about us. Not too shabby. The reason I've added this though is to show you one problem you may encounter is now say I want to bring I want to bring some bootstrap because it uh, looks a bit bare as it is uh, and I don't want to rewrite all the CSS myself I'm not going to bring in the JavaScript I'm not going to use this here but if I have to include this I have to include in the head of this file and in the head of this file if later I decide to change either dependency becomes a nightmare to manage so we're going to use what's called, what's referred to as a partial here. And it's going to be a snippet of HTML. I've copied this over here and created a head tag that's going to be inserted in, that we can insert in whatever page we want. So maybe what I want to do um, here is then use another tag, this tag. Here and then I put the path to the header of HTML here. Now I can copy this and put it in my about. Now since it's using Bootstrap, I think by default it's already gonna change the look somewhat. We should see a difference. Yeah, we do see a difference. Um and there, so here I have the bootstrap style, I should have it here too. That's pretty neat now if I want to add dependencies and whatever. Can just go do it in, in, in a single file. Um, one thing we've done the, this idea of parameters and queries I've, I've, I've shown for uh, to use how you would go about using it for an API, but maybe not for um, well, for other HTML things. So let's say we have books and we're going to have categories of books and we're going to want to serve that. 
you are gonna have a quest in response. Uh, it's not gonna be category, it's gonna be category. That way the user can go to book slash books slash whatever category of books they're interested in. And here we can send some uh, a response. I'm gonna again use this and use this here. We're gonna have book.html. Uh, I didn't copy anything, did it? Yank that. Um, and what we're gonna have here then is maybe. Oh, we're just gonna have the container, right? We're just gonna have the container. So that way, when people visit the page, they just get the category of uh, the books. And here, what we can then do is right, we can render books.html. I think that's how I call the file. No nope, singular book. Keep doing that one. And the category is going to be part of the request. We're going to have per get parameter that I'm using here, which is called category. Uh, and we run this. Now, I didn't add a link, but if I go to slash books, again, I'm not serving slash books. I get a 404. If I get books of fiction, I get fiction, science, I get science or whatever that I, in, in any event it's just gonna render this um so yeah that's i think i'll leave it at that for this short introduction i think i hope it gives you some idea of how it works and what you can do uh within the orx uh there's tons more to cover uh, i hope i'll do that in in, in subse subsequent uh videos Hopefully I do a series where we build uh, together a more substantial application um, with the framework. Thank you again.